What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, got another install going on today on the JL. And as you can see, in a different environment. Uh, I was in Maryland for a little while. Just a little backstory. I just got home from deployment. Uh, I was in Maryland visiting the family and it's cold up there. So that's why I was always bundled up. And now I'm back in Florida. That's where I live. That's where, uh, that's where I've been the last couple of years. So uh, without further ado, I'll show you what I've got going on today. Oh. So we've got the Jeep tucked in this tiny little garage. And here's what we've got. So we're doing Baja designs. These are going to be the fogs. I opted for the Squadron Sports. Uh, I've heard it's a great light for the value. Uh, I took advantage of a sale from Reckless Off-Road and uh, actually from Baja as well. They were doing a mail-in rebate, so got a pretty good deal on those. These are going to be the A-pillar lights, spotlights. And then the American Adventure Lab Highline Fender Kit. I'm not going to pull the liners. Uh, what I'm going to do, I've seen a few people do is cut here, remove this whole bottom section and the light, and uh, should be a pretty clean look. And tomorrow, I've actually got some new wheels and tires going on, so I'll be sure to post about that as well. Um, I'm not gonna show you guys how to do the fogs. It's gonna be really easy. There's four bolts behind there. I got the Baja Designs lights uh, with the sport bumper brackets because that's what these fogs are off of. So it's just four bolts. The bracket should go in just the same way that these are going to come out. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty much plug and play. So if there's any issues or if there's anything cool, tips or anything, I'll show you guys. But um, otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Alright, we're under the Jeep, guys. I just wanted to show you. Going into this, I wasn't 100% sure that it would actually work. Because these fogs, the brackets, are made for the sport bumper. I've got a rugged ridge HD uh, stubby on here. And if you can look, the brackets, they worked. Uh, I used the factory, not the factory, but the uh, rugged ridge bolts that came with the bumper to adapt, adapt the fogs on. All is well. With the harness, I still have to do the other one. And Baja includes a harness adapter as well, so... This should be, in theory, plug and play. All right, welcome back. So I've got both of the fogs installed. Bam, they work, they lit up. I'll show you all that later. Got the driver's side fender removed. I went ahead and took the light out. Super easy to do, a couple torques. Uh, I did have to remove inside the fender liner. There's a little clip here that holds this piece in. And now all I have to do is come right across here, hopefully make a nice clean line, reinstall everything. Uh, so far this has been pretty simple. I think I'm going to have to trim a little bit of the liner inside there as well. but. Um, all right, I'm gonna set the camera up and uh, let's get going. All right, real quick guys, just wanna show you what I'm gonna be using. It's a cordless Dremel. I picked it up off of, uh, off of Amazon. It's from Tack Life. Got a ton of good reviews and I'm actually surprised by the power uh, this thing puts out. And it comes in a nice little carrying kit, you know, has some attachments in there. It's a pretty good deal, I think it's like 40 bucks. Uh, the Dremel brand is over expensive in my opinion. Um, so just, you know, read your reviews, try this out if you want to. Again, uh, it's, it seems like a pretty good deal. I'm going to see how it does with this thing. And uh, don't forget, safety first. You don't want to lose an eye by shooting something in there. And uh, yeah, not worth it. <laughs> so wear your goggles.
I just wanted to show you guys real quick. I can't really see it from back there, but I used tape just to uh, help me. I'm trying to make the line as even as possible going back. I'll have to trim it back here some way before this rivet. I'm actually going to do this on the uh, on the ground just to so I can get in there. I'll show you guys the after. All right, guys, there we have it. Got it installed. Trim the fender to try to match the paint line. Go back and underneath. I went ahead and cut out a little bit of the liner. Still attached here. There's going to be a bolt here. That's attached back there as well. So I may put some double sided tape right there just so it doesn't go crazy and flap around. But everything is looking pretty good. But the wire ran back, is it tied up under there? Um, one tip if you're going to do it this way is just inside there I had to trim off some of the painted part of the fender and uh, oh crap I don't know where it went so I won't show you guys that but it was basically the front tab in here it was broken anyways but it won't fit in between the bracket so I trimmed that off and I think it looks great I'm very happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side done and then uh, I'll show you when it's all done. Hey! Alright, we're all finished up. Got both sides installed. Same thing over here. Just a little bit of trimming. Match the fender line. Under here. Trim the liner away, everything's bolted in. Again in here, make sure you cut that tab off. It's kind of hard to see. But uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. The LEDs, the, the white doesn't quite match the Oculus lights, but it's all good. It is what it is. And there we are with the turns on, or the hazards, I guess you could say, but they're all working correctly as far as I can tell. I did get the lights with the 
bulb out fix. Um, but I also have taser, so if uh, the bulb out fix doesn't end up working for me, I'll just recode it. Should be good to go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and install these A pillar lights now. Got a little bit of daylight left, so I think I can knock that out real quick. Hey, welcome back. Sorry without you guys. I already pulled off the panels there. Um, I pulled the wipers, pulled this tray, it's just held them with clips, and I've ran the wiring for the A pillar lights underneath the rain tray, trying to keep it clean. Cut down the other side. I won't see anything in the engine bay. Uh, running through there. I'm gonna go ahead and get the panels back on, get the lights thrown on, and get to wiring. Just to let you guys know, this is going to be wired to the auxiliary switches uh, that I've put in previously. So it should be a very, very simple install. Alright guys, we've got the lights installed, brackets. Wiring is coming out right there on both sides. And here's the other harness. It's going to go to the battery and switches. What's going on guys? New day, more mods. Uh, actually, I'm going to be finishing up the other mod. I didn't have any connectors for the pillar lights. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys uh, this harness right here from Baja. It's got a switch, inline fuse. If you've got the aux switches, you don't need it. Um, so as I was showing you yesterday, I've got the wire running through here. This is the part of the, the harness that I cut off. And inside there's a uh, positive and a negative. Positive is gonna go to the switch. Negative is gonna go to the ground. I'm gonna fire them up, make sure they work. All right guys, wired up. Let's see what happens. There we go. So they're wired to aux two. Down in here, I use this ground and a black wire. Very, very easy. As you can see, there's no seat. That's gonna be my next video. All right, so. I think that's it. Uh, today was all about lighting. So we did the uh, American Adventure Lab Highline LEDs, kept the liners in, that was successful. Uh, in a previous video I talked about getting 37s, or maybe getting 37s, and uh, just want to show you that I put them on today. I went with the 1552 Turbo Mac HDs, got them on the Black Friday sale, really, really awesome deal. And I went with the Patagonias. And 37 by 12 and a half, 17. So yeah, I'm super happy with it. I already took it out for a drive. Uh, they are a lot quieter than I expected. I guess that's per the reviews, so I guess that's pretty accurate. Uh, ride really, really great, true, smooth, no bumps, no vibrations. Very happy with it. And again, today, other than the American Adventure Lab kit, we did the uh, the Baja Fogs. Those are just plug and play, super simple. Showed you a little tip on them. And then the A-pillar lights wired up to the AUX2 on the JL AUX switches. Uh, next video, it's gonna be PRP. I already did the driver's side seat. I wanted to do a little test run to make sure I, uh, <laughs> I knew what I was doing before recording it. So uh, it's in, it's installed. I went with all black with the dark gray suede. Super happy with those seats. They are very comfortable. It's the fixed back model. Um, and uh, excuse the mess, but there's a little bit of bracketry. And then the other seat is uh, tucked back here in this messy garage that I need to clean up. Right there. So I'm going to get started on that now. Uh, as my last video stated, we're going to be doing a seat install today. That's why I'm sitting on the ground in this PRP seat. Uh, let me get up and show you guys. So while I was deployed, I decided I hate the stock JL seats. They're just not good. They're uncomfortable. 
my uh, my butt would fall asleep on long trips, not even really long trips, like an hour, and I'd, I'd be done. So this is what I ordered. PRP, fixed back, all black, very simple, gray to go with the gray. Yeah, let me show you inside real quick. This is the setup I'm using. PRP won't sell me brackets, or anybody for that matter, I guess, because of the airbags and the seats. So what I figured out, uh, and I figured this out while I was deployed just by looking at photos online of different bracketry. This is the Corbo JL bracket and slider. Bolts right in to the factory locations. Everything's good to go. PRP uses this uh, side mount for the seats instead of going straight in to the bracket. So what we've got going on here, oh my gosh, they keep falling. So what we've got going on here is JK PRP brackets that are being bolted and adapted to the Corbo seat adapter and rail. Uh, for me, it was the easiest way without having something custom fabbed. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. What I ended up doing was an Allen head screw or bolt with a nylon lock nut that's going to go up from the bottom up through the hole and then the nut's going to be on top which will be on top of the bracket here so it'll be right in there come up and the reason why i went with this is because this barely fits into the uh into the slider. There's not a lot of room in there. So I had to get creative. Now I do need to open up the hole just a little bit here and then down here. Let me show you. Down here is actually an oval where you're going to be going into and as you can see it just needs a little bit of clearance. Nothing crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and uh, I'll come back once it's all bolted up. Alright we're back. Mount it up. Everything is good to go. Pulled the seat belt off of the factory seat. And luckily enough, Corbeau already has a spot for it to bolt up. Factory bolt and everything. Very, very easy. All right, now for the, uh, the fun part. So, this, this bladder. And this harness. Hang on, let me turn this music off. My bad, guys, my bad. There we go. Alright. All that was under the seat. So I took out, there's a bladder. And I discovered that if you do not have the bladder in there, it's gonna throw a essentially a code that will say that you're not in the car. Uh, it'll still drive, everything still works, but you're going to have an airbag light, you're going to have the auto start stop will not work, um, and it was just a pain. So I've come up with a way to transfer that over. The, uh, the bracketry goes up under the seat, super easy to just use a pry tool, get up in there, pop it out, and then it also is attached here, here. And then here and then the other side, there was just little clips that held in the bladder itself. Alright. This harness here is, you've got a sensor, you need to use that. This is what plugs into the bottom of the Jeep. Uh, the seatbelt plug is here as well. And then the plug for the bladder so all those plugs are going to be filled up and just for safe uh, safeguarding uh, I did ground it so I, I don't know if that's necessary or not but there was a spot under there I was able to ground it on the um, on the seat bracket I'll show you guys that in a little bit now one thing I did have to do these hooks uh, there's really nowhere for them on the uh, the PRP seats so on the other seat I went ahead and I cut them off and uh, I think what I did, yeah, so right here, across here, across here, and then the other one. 
all the way across just so it makes a flat surface. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them off and uh, I'll show you guys the aftermath. All right guys, check it out, check it out. Bladder is installed now. I don't know if this is considered ghetto or anything like that, but I use zip ties. It doesn't take much to hold it in place. So I've got the bladder, the bracket. I'm gonna go ahead and install the seat bracket, the wiring, and then I will come back and show you guys the finished product. All right guys, we're back. Just wanted to show you the wiring harness under here. So everything's hooked up. The sensor's up there. I just sort of found open spots for the push tabs. The sensor I just zip tied here. Here's the ground I was talking about. Seatbelt wire comes up and over to this plug here. This plugs into the Jeep. That's about it. I did want to note something though with this bracket because Corbeau and I guess the JK Corbeau for the JL and JK are going to be different. So there was a gap here on both sides, all four corners. So I needed to make up that gap. So I ended up buying new hardware and half inch metal spacers to put in there. So you can see we've got bolt washer, spacer, washer, nylon locking nut. So there it is for now. The airbag harness is separate. So what I'm gonna do is cut off the portion that clips to the vehicle and then solder in a resistor. And hopefully that will get rid of the airbag light. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed. All right guys, we're all done. I have two seats now. It's been a while since this thing has had two seats in it. Before I deployed over a year ago, I took out the passenger seat so that my dog, uh, Archer, could ride comfortably in the front with me instead of being shoved in the back with all my crap. So Both PRP seats are in. I'm going to show you under here uh, from what you can, you know, what you can see. Everything's pretty tidy. You just see a little bit of the harness that is for the Jeep. This is the airbag connector. Uh, that's gonna be my next trick, is making the airbag light go off because right now it's still on and I'm still messing with resistors to try to figure out the right combination. But uh, maybe tomorrow. So that's it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was informative. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment uh, or reach out to me and I'll do what I can to give you a hand. But until next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I really appreciate that, and uh, stay safe. Take care.